I've talked about YouTube drama, which I talk about as little as possible because honestly, the algorithm loves it when I do that, but I do not want that to become the focus of this channel. <sighs> I feel like I jinxed myself with this one. Oh, Sniper Wolf, and also Jack's Films, but mostly YouTube. So that's the thing. I really didn't want to talk about this. I know I say that often when I do these, but the thing was I was watching it unfold, and I'm not like continuously because I don't have the energy for that, but I was checking in on it intermittently, see what was going on, and the point at which I realized, oh, I do have things to say about this was when YouTube announced they were demonetizing Sniper Wolf. But in order to explain why I have things to talk about that, I gotta give context for what the heck has been going on. Because maybe you don't know, or maybe it just helps to refresh. So, there are three primary figures in all of this. Two YouTubers, and then YouTube itself. YouTube itself is not going to enter into the story for a little bit. But once I get to them, I'm gonna stay on them for a while, but set them aside for right now. So let's start with Sniper Wolf. And if you're wondering why I'm doing s like that, it's cause she put three S's in the darn thing and that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. Sniper Wolf is what is known as a reaction content creator. There are various kinds of content on a platform like YouTube, you have um, everything from video essayist, you have life vloggers, you have style advice, you have all kinds of things, you have practical things, crafting. Reaction creators on this platform or any platform, they're also kind of big on Twitch, are people who watch something and react to it. Now, the nature of that dynamic can vary greatly. Honestly, I do a certain amount of reaction content before the uh, SAG after strike, which uh, is still in effect, people seem to keep thinking, is it the strike over? Only the writers, the actors are still striking. Um, I uh, was doing, on a fairly regular basis, trailer reactions over on my secondary channel, Break Room of Geeks. Subscribe over there if you haven't already. Um, I've still got other stuff going up there, but I haven't done trailer reactions in a while because I'm supporting the strike and the union. But they are not inherently good or bad, but there's a lot of gradation in terms of what they do. And there's a certain amount of controversy around the very nature of reaction content. Basically what it boils down to, there are people who think all reaction content is fine. There are people who think reaction content is inherently making money off of work somebody else did that you have not paid for because you're just watching a thing somebody else made, but you get the ad revenue from it. And then there's the middle where there's a lot of gradation and a lot of nuance. I think at this point, most people, unless they have a specific love or hate for certain uh, reaction content creators, there aren't that many on the far ends. Generally, if you get someone who either says it's never okay or it's always okay, it's usually because they're trying to either slam or defend certain content creators, usually reaction creators. Most people are gonna fall somewhere in the middle. The generally accepted way to go about this, or at least the things to avoid is, you shouldn't just be sitting there watching the thing as you play it in its entirety with your face up in the corner, just reacting. I know that, you know, the word reaction makes you think, oh, well, that's all you do. Well, that's not transformative. And that gets into incredibly questionable issues of copyright. Now, there's a lot of, ins and outs and nuance in this. There's questions of, well, doesn't this give a boost to the original creators? And lots of creators have said they don't mind, but some have said they do. And there's also the question of like, how much is the reactor adding to it? Did they show the entire thing? Did they say where it came from originally? Did they credit the original creator? Are they actually adding commentary, insight, nuance? Are they looking stuff up? Are they bringing something new to the table? Or are they just sitting there, their face in the corner, collecting the money? And reaction content creators run the gamut. And even some will do both. There are some creators who will often 
add meaningful con uh, commentary or other things, but sometimes, but then other times just do nothing. This tends to be more of an issue with the ones who stream on Twitch for like eight hours at a stretch and they get up to cook food, but they leave something playing in its entirety. But that's, again, that's a whole other thing. And I'm not trying to let this conversation take up the whole of this video. But know that reaction content in and of itself can be a bit dicey. Now, to Sniper Wolf herself, she is a reaction content creator who has sparked no small amount of controversy, partly because a lot of what she does is TikTok reactions. And that means that she is reacting to an awful lot of content that she did not make, that uh, is made by other people, and she often adds nothing. And so even within the realm of an already kind of controversial end of content creation, even people who are like, there's nothing inherently wrong with the reaction content have a tendency to point to her and go, there's kind of a problem with what you do though. If you want kind of a breakdown of the issues with Sniper Wolf's content in particular that doesn't really touch on the stuff I'm gonna be getting to because it's a month old, uh, here's a video I'm gonna recommend from Echo is Weird, um, who did a pretty thorough explanation of why Sniper Wolf in particular is controversial and in particular, her issues with Jax Films, who now let's bring him in. Now, Jax Films is a content creator, does a lot of comedy-based stuff, a lot of skit stuff, has been around on YouTube for a very long time, almost from the start of this platform. And he has taken issue with Sniper Wolf's style of reaction a lot and very, very bo vocally. Basically, there's been kind of an ongoing beef between the two of them, with him criticizing what she does and her trolling him in various ways. Um, now, I know I kind of brought up the issue of copyright. If you're thinking, well, shouldn't she just be getting shut down? If, if it is as blatant as people say, like she's uploading the whole thing, it's unaltered, she's not commentating, why isn't she running afoul of copyright? That has a bit more to do with YouTube, but I'll touch on it quickly here um, in case, just so I don't forget to bring it up later. What the issue there is, is that while YouTube has a copyright claim system, a claim has to actually be made by the copyright holder of the work involved. And so it's not, strictly speaking, YouTube's responsibility to prevent copyright from happening. It is their responsibility to do something about it when somebody makes a copyright claim. The problem is that while somebody, any of the people who have had their stuff reacted to by Sniper Wolf could put in a copyright claim and request that the video be taken down, be blocked, or that they start collecting the revenue because it's their work. The issue becomes that if she disputes that, she can take it to court. Would she ever? I don't know. But as I said, she reacts to a lot of TikTokers, a lot of creators who are not making massive amounts of money, a lot of people who do this for fun, people who either don't have the uh, investment in what they do to take it to court, or even if they do, can't afford to do so. So this is something I'll be revisiting. Uh, justice is for people with money. And people with money don't have to face justice. Hold on to that thought. We'll be coming back to it. But getting back to Jack's film, he's been criticizing her for a while. And on Instagram, oh, uh, I forget, a week Two weeks ago, I've lost track of it. Time has no meaning anymore. But Sniper Wolf on her Instagram, she put up a thing saying like, hey, I'm filming just five minutes from Jack's film's house. Should I go and say hi? And then soon after put up an image of his front door. And so Jack's films called her out as having doxed him. Now doxing, uh, if you're not familiar with that term, you probably are, but let's cover it real quick, is revealing uh, personal information, in particular things like full name and address or personal phone numbers of people who have not made that uh, stuff freely available to the public or who otherwise, like, that's not public knowledge where they live and you've just told the frickin' internet. And especially when it comes to any influencer of size, Getting docs is actually a really big deal because yes, there's the obvious things of people who don't like you showing up and threatening you, but like even your fans, you don't want people just showing up at your house. It's a really big problem. In some areas, it is in fact a crime. So 
Jax Films basically started calling on YouTube to do something about this because doxing is in violation of YouTube's um, guidelines. Now, if I were to guess, it's possible maybe part of the reason YouTube didn't act right away. They did act eventually, I'll get to it. Maybe part of the reason YouTube didn't act right away is because the doxing didn't happen on their platform, but their platform is what she's big on, so it shouldn't really matter. It's one of those things like, yeah, look, this person has done this really bad thing. Are you sure you want to keep employing them even though they didn't do it on company time? Kind of that sort of thing. So YouTube did eventually take action. Now, I know there's been some discussion and some like odd things, like there was a thing that Sniper Wolf put out where she was like, his address is publicly available anyway. And when I looked into that, it looked like there is, or at least was at some point, it's hard to verify because if this was the case, it was changed and or fixed, but it looks like there was an address that was publicly searchable for Jax Films LLC, which may or may not have been his personal address. And that was uh, something searchable. Like you had to dig around. You had to like find the company listing on LinkedIn or things like that. But that information does not appear to be there any longer. And even if it was, just the fact that like people could have found this, yeah, but it wasn't freely available on one of the biggest social media platforms on the goddamn planet. That's still doxing. So even if that was the case, what she did is still messed up. And I want to kind of get out of the weeds of all this, because again, the specifics of this uh, are not really what I'm here to talk about. It's background, it's necessary background. I want to talk about YouTube, because YouTube did eventually take action. And I'm going to quote them, what they said in a reply, actually, to one of Jack's film's tweets demanding action. Confirming Sniper Wolf has received a temporary monetization suspension per creator responsibilities policy. Off-platform actions that put others' personal safety at risk, harm our community, and the behavior on both sides isn't what we want on YouTube. Hoping everyone helps move this convo to a better place. Oh, I bet you are hoping that, YouTube. But you made two big mistakes arguably three for the fact that this action was not as swift as a lot of people think it should have been. But let's set that one aside. Because, you know, bureaucracy, demonetizing somebody, especially somebody big and notable, is a pretty big thing. So maybe they took a little bit of time to get advice, maybe even run it by legal, things like that. So like, while I'm not going to say it's okay that they didn't act sooner, I'm going to let the delay in action go for the time being in this case. I'm not saying you have to let it go. I'm saying for my purposes, I'm going to let it go. So that means they did two things that are a big problem. One, they freely announced that the demonetization of Sniper Wolf's channel is temporary. They said it right up front. Not conditional. Because conditional would have been we're demonetizing it, and if she can comply with X, Y, and Z, she'll get it back. That would be conditional. No, just temporary. Just saying up front, this will lift with time. So you're saying flat out that all she has to do is wait. Secondly, both sides? Now look, again, I don't want to get bogged down into the weeds of whether or not Jax Films or fans of Jax Films were harassing of the YouTube support team or other things. Honestly, I could kind of believe that they were. But, like, the both sides that YouTube should actually care about are Jax Films and Sniper Wolf. The worst he was doing was demanding action, at least so far as what I could find. So why, what are you both sides -ing? Here's the thing, YouTube does not know how to cull bad actors off its platform. It doesn't. It almost never boots anybody entirely. There are the rare exceptions, Alex Jones, one of the bigger ones, but for the most part, the actions that YouTube takes against creators who have flatly violated the rules, but are big enough is insufficient. 
and insulting, to be honest, because this is not just Sniper Wolf. YouTube's been pulling this nonsense for a long time. Logan Paul, PewDiePie, Matt Walsh, all of them and many more have had their monetization suspended and it is always temporary. And more to the point, it is always temporary and that lifting is pretty much unconditional. They wait a certain amount of time until they think everything's blown over and then YouTube says, here, you can start making money again. Now, there's some of the uh, odd specifics in the case of Sniper Wolf, such as the fact that some folks snooping around have uncovered evidence that it looks like only her new uploads are being demonetized, not any of the old stuff on the channel. That still gets to generate revenue, same as any, uh, any other time. Now, granted, the highest revenue income for someone like Sniper Wolf is going to be on newly released stuff. But she's still pulling in money, it looks like, from the old stuff. So it was a partial demonetization, and you said up front it was temporary. The thing is, though, I almost kind of respect the fact that they said up front that it was temporary, because at least they're not trying to hide the fact that this is a slap on the wrist and was never going to be more than that, because they've made bigger deals in the past with people like Logan Paul, with people like PewDiePie, with people like Matt Walsh, but in all those cases, eventually the monetization came back. Actually, PewDiePie is the one question mark on that. From what I can tell, the last time he got demonetized was December of last year, and I couldn't find confirmation that he was re-monetized again. But then that brings us back to the other thing. Even if you did permanently demonetize these channels, if you let them continue to use your platform, these people with millions of subscribers, they're still going to make a living doing it and continue to be able to, boot, to do whatever it is you are trying to punish them for because you're still giving them access to an audience. As I said, I think PewDiePie might actually still be demonetized, but it doesn't matter. He's got sponsorships for videos. He's got merch. He does live streaming elsewhere. He has enough flows of income. Same with Matt Walsh. He could bitch and moan all he wanted about getting demonetized, but he's subsidized by the Daily Wire. His bills are paid already. The thing that you actually have, YouTube, that you could actually take away from them that would actually hurt them is the platform. Because the thing is, when all of these have proven temporary, and especially when you say at the front end that it's going to be temporary, what this ultimately amounts to is a fine. It's a fine over time as opposed to a set number because you're going to remove their ability to make money on at least new things for a certain amount of time. And however much money that might have been, I don't know, could be a little, could be a lot. But ultimately what you're doing is issuing a fine. A fine is only a punishment if someone can't afford to pay it. These channels with millions of subscribers and massive payouts for sponsorships and guest spots elsewhere and merchandise, they can afford it. They don't have to get better. And we know they don't have to get better because during the time when Matt Walsh was demonetized and at least he said, YouTube said he had to stop doing certain things or start doing certain things in terms of his behavior. He didn't obey by any of that. That's assuming that he was being accurate. Honestly, I don't trust a word that came out of this, that guy's mouth. It's distinctly possible that they didn't give him any specific guidelines, but he continued to do the exact thing that YouTube said they demonetized him for while he was demonetized and he still got his stuff back. He doesn't have to get better. He doesn't have to improve because you're going to give him back what you took. It's a fine. He can afford to pay it. And so he doesn't have to improve. Nobody's impressed anymore. We all got spooked back in 2018 when the nonsense with PewDiePie happened and Logan Paul happened and the adpocalypse happened and you restructured all this stuff so people could not make nearly as much money on this platform itself. And then everybody sought additional streams of revenue. They sought the sponsorships. They got Patreons. They did all this other stuff. They may still need or at the very least want the income they get from YouTube directly, but that's not their only thing anymore. It hasn't been for a while because of changes you've already done. And as I said, back in 2018, we all panicked. I was here. We all panicked when we saw what happened. But what you've proven since then is that if you have over a million subscribers, you will get your monetization back. You just will. 
All you have to do is wait it out. That is what you have proven over and over and over again. And this is honestly a bigger problem than just YouTube. This is indicative of the inherent problem with fines as punishment. Fines are only a punishment to people who cannot afford them. It's why parking or speeding tickets for someone who is broke and was speeding to try and get to their job that they desperately need to make their bills because they're living paycheck to paycheck, that will hurt them a lot. Speeding ticket to somebody who makes $100,000 a year, it's an annoyance at most, and it's not going to deter the behavior. Why would it? Now, you could try and argue with me like, well, that's why it escalates so many things and you get your license suspended. That's assuming you get caught, yeah, but this isn't a one-to-one, -one. I'm just being illustrative. You want me to go more of a one-to-one, -one, I'll give you a one-to-one. -one. Companies, when they are fined, in violation of consumer protection laws. They are fined for less than the money they made by breaking the rules. This has happened with pharmaceutical companies. This has happened with automobile manufacturers. They continue to break the rules because the maximum fine that can be placed on them is less than the money they'll make by breaking the rules. Now, is that exactly what's going on with YouTube where Breaking the rules is what's making the money? No, not necessarily, but it's got the exact same problem of not deterring behavior. Because in the case of massive corporations, why would they start doing what's in the best interest of the consumer? They make more money breaking the rules and then paying the fine. That's if they even get caught. So same thing here. If these people want to behave this way, want to say the things they say, do the things they do, push the ideas they push, if that's what they care about, and that's what they want to do. Making them pay a fine that they can afford to pay won't stop them doing it. Just imagine what it would be like if you lived in a place where if you robbed a bank, you had to pay a thousand dollar fine if you were found guilty of robbing the bank, but you got to keep all the money you took from the bank. What do you think would happen? Everybody be robbing the damn bank. That's the incentive set created by fines levied against people who can afford them. YouTube, if you actually care about the integrity of your platform, about enforcing the rules that you freely enforce against significantly smaller creators, then you will not simply demonetize these people, you will take them off the platform. You will say, this is not who we are, and this is not what we're about, and we don't want it here. But you won't do that because you don't think that because they have millions of subscribers and they bring in money because it's worth noting, keep this in mind, demonetizing these people doesn't mean that no ads play on their videos. It just means they don't get the revenue from it. YouTube still makes ad revenue on demonetized videos or at least videos that were demonetized by them. You can voluntarily have it, no monetization, and in theory, in theory, there's supposed to be no ads run on it. There have been some people who have uncovered what look like instances of YouTube uh, manually turning monetization and ads back on, on the back end, which I don't know if I'm comfortable saying that's a certainty, but I've had my own evidence in the past of them loading up more ads than were placed there originally by the creators. I did a whole video on the fact that they do that nonsense. YouTube, I know you don't really care. I know that. You are here to make money. That's always the cry and the defense. A corporation exists to make money. Yeah, they do. But if you want to at least pretend to have standards, pretend to have rules that aren't just, if you are bringing in enough money for us, then we will look the other way, then start banning people who break the rules. Large channels, repeat offenders, but you don't and you won't. This platform is rotten. It has been for a long time. Why am I still here? Because it's a de facto monopoly. I mean, it is.
The thing is, the tech sector is severely underregulated in general, but lawmakers don't get how this works. They look at the fact that YouTube exists, Twitch exists, TikTok exists, and they think, oh, there is variety and competition for video platforms on the internet. There isn't a monopoly, there's all these options. Except each of those is effectively a monopoly of a smaller sliver of it. TikTok's effectively a monopoly on short form video content. Twitch is effectively a monopoly on streaming. Yes, you can stream on the other platforms. Yes, you can do short content on the other platforms, but those are the de facto monopolies for that. YouTube is the de facto monopoly for what I do. Sitting in front of a camera, rambling for, I don't know, half an hour or so at a guess this time, and then editing it down and making it presentable. Video essay style content or just edited video content in general. This is the de facto monopoly. They hold too much power. Nobody is going to make them actually enforce their rules. That's the thing. That's the problem when the things that are and aren't supposed to happen are 100% dictated by company policies because they can ignore their own rules. They wrote them, they can ignore them. What's the penalty if YouTube just decides to not enforce its own rules? Nothing! Loss of credibility? Okay, where else are you gonna go for this kind of content, especially if you're a creator? Where else are you gonna put up your stuff? Now, what's the solution for this? I don't know. I'm not necessarily saying it's gonna be laws because no, I don't really want legislators trying to make these rules either. Should there be some kind of penalty for places failing to uh, live up to their own stated policies and rules? Maybe. But I'm not a politician. I, I, it's not my job to come up with all the solutions here. That doesn't mean I don't have a right to point out the frickin' problems. Yeah, Sniper Wolf did something messed up. But YouTube is the end boss of where all the problems land. It's YouTube that won't do anything to actually cause people like her or Logan Paul or PewDiePie or Matt Walsh to ever change their behavior. I was foolish enough for a hot second to get excited back when Matt Walsh first got demonetized. And I saw what he was doing while he was demonetized. I thought, they're not gonna give it back to him. He's, he's still doing what they demonetized him for. And then they did. I don't know why I thought that wouldn't happen. I think I was just uh, enjoying the hope Hope's a hell of a drug, man. But then I crashed, because reality came back in. So yeah, Sniper Wolf, Jack's Films, it's a mess. But it is a, uh, it's a rotten little apple out on a branch of the completely rotten tree that is YouTube. Ain't it fun here? What are your thoughts about any of this? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon is my side thing, so I'm not 100% dependent on this platform. That being said, that does not fully cover my bills, so I do still need this platform. So help me if they demonetize me in retaliation. No, they won't. They won't. They don't know who I am. I'm small. I'm under 100,000. I still count as a small YouTuber. They don't care about me. <laughs> I mean, they don't care about me in the sense that they won't notice me. Will they care what I'm saying if they did notice? Yeah, probably. Whatever. I'm not trying to be conspiratorial. Like, they're going to come for me. Like, they don't give a crap. I'm not a million plus subscriber channel. Of course they don't give a crap. But that's why sometimes you'll see smaller channels just vanish out of nowhere. Anything sub a million followers can just be snapped out of existence for violating who knows what rules. And to be fair, YouTube is slightly better than, say, TikTok, who will not even tell you what rules you broke and then ban your account and then, and then reject your appeal literally within minutes of you sending it so there's no way a human being actually looked at it and do that to you twice. I might have a bone to pick. So YouTube is not the worst at enforcement of its rules, but it's bad. You could at least try. You could at least not make it very clear how token this is. Or the fact that the only reason you did it was so everyone would shut up. You practically said that at the end of your freaking thing 
on Twitter. Oh, and by the way, just as a little cap on this, Sniper Wolf did issue an apology and claimed to own up to her actions, which she only did after the demonetization came in, which makes me wonder if that was either a request and or requirement from YouTube that she apologized for it, or if she's just trying to play nice. I don't know. This has been going on for a while. She could have apologized at any time. Whatever. I'm done with this. Thoughts in the comments. I'll mention the Patreon again. I would have already done the thing up there. Link in the description. Help me eat and not be as fully dependent on this freaking hell site. But what I really want you to remember, despite all this nonsense, you are beautiful. You are valid and you are loved. You're the council, and I'm just running the meetings. Until next time, this council is adjourned. Time to thank some Patreon backers, and in the spirit of October, I'd like to thank Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfula, Goddess Alita, Turok, The Thing That Goes Doink in the Anime, Ruth, Oliver B, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Fernobilax the Poodle, Robin Powell, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, and Rosalind Bennett. Thank you for your assistance. Um, I don't know, I might try theming the shout-outs in the future. I don't know, we'll see. Thank you. <laughs>